is we're going to no, no, no. we have a bunch of stuff here that we need to remember okay so i had a similar issue with commit linting where um when a git command or let's see where a git command failed from a subprocess run Had a similar issue with command latin where git command failed from a subprocess run, um, uh, causing the CI to hang until the job was canceled. Okay, great. Okay, so this is our issue, and I will link to it. So this is well one of one of many, right? Um, so this one also shows the issue. Um, um, and what else happened? So then there's also this uh, this thing. So um, I guess we could push it up, and it would be the different issue. But what was okay? So we yeah. So there's multiple issues there. There, there, there's still issues. So I haven't, I hadn't, I hadn't gotten a chance to fix that yet. So. Okay. Oh, this is all out of whack. Okay, dokie. Scroll. Wow, slow today. Sorry about this. Good catch. Thanks for bringing this up. So one thing about GSOC mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that there was a mail in which we heard that it was written like uh, whatever is merged before twenty third eighteen hundred UTC is being could be evaluated. So like uh, the main PR is not yet in. So it would be like that uh, an issue for us? Well. Uh, I didn't see that email. So, what is this a Google email or what is this? Yes, it, I have probably a screenshot on on your uh, GitHub chat head on personal. Should, uh, they will likely require you to merge your code sooner than the deadline. UTC. All right. Well, we, uh, yeah, I didn't see that message. So, I mean, I would say that, has, have you submitted, you submitted your thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I made my actually like actual code push last one done on last Friday itself. Mm -hmm. After that, I only like merged that master. Okay. Well, so we, I mean, yeah, I've just been in progress reviewing it. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't worry about it, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. So, um, yeah, I mean, all we have to do here is just merge it, right? And I hadn't finished with the review, so um, you were ready to go at that point. So, let's see. Um, what else is in here? Yeah, I, unfortunately, I didn't have the. Uh, I didn't have time to do stuff over the weekend, which is why I was hoping to get stuff finished up by Friday. Um, so I started merging stuff Sunday night, um, but you know I didn't. That's that's why we were targeting Friday. So um, let's see what was in here. Where config. Yeah, I wanted to look at this. So config tag as config. Up. 
four. Uh, so we we agreed upon like we would be logging the differences yep. as a warning. Yep. So that's it. That looks good. Yeah. All right. So. Da, da, da. Yeah, I think all this stuff looks good. I just had I needed the chance to go over it. So my last code push, which was related to the project, was in 21st of August. Mm -hmm. That was the last push. Like I pushed TensorFlow Hub model. I actually, actually missed listing it. And then I saw that there was one more model that I had to look into. Mm -hmm. So I ended up uh, doing it on 21st, but the work was done before that. All right. Yeah, I mean, I would say that I wouldn't worry too much about it. We haven't had any issues in the previous years. I mean, knock on wood. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's I fine by you. It's fine by me. Yeah, it is definitely fine by me. So. So I actually, like in some of the cases, I've created a base class for I saw that. the models. So because because it was just being duplicated at twice in yeah. all the models, yeah, like nice there was a regression and classification model. So I just went ahead and like put it in one place. Great, great. Um, yeah, that was good. I saw that. Um, let's see, good feature names. Well, we're using that. Some So did you, let's see, so, so the config, the actual saving of the config dict itself, let's see, that's happening in a exit. Let's see, where does that happen? Write text, okay, config path, config.json, okay. So all this stuff went into the base. All right. So, and then did you, so you say you manually validate them. So did you change the extensions in the test files like we talked about? Mm, yes, I actually went all through all of the tests and they would like work exactly the same. They would not like, Great. Great. Uh, you just have to change the extension and it would create a R file itself for you. Great. Extract so, and read from it. I even went ahead and like changed the config in some of them just to test like that. 
uh, are we logging the differences or not and we are logging the differences perfectly okay great great all right um let's see so it's not parent let's see off So in some models, like the model name is uh, generated from the hash of features and another set of stuff. Yeah. So that that is like closely coupled with the saving and loading stuff. So I made it to the, I moved it to such stuff to the parent class. Great. Uh, like like the model class, but now what happens is like the context needs that information as well. So I have just did a dot parent everywhere. So. Yep, that's great. That's exactly how it should be. So why did we change model name or path? Actually, it was a bit ambiguous uh, in use. So uh, I just like sort of changed it because uh, it would be more clear. OK. So if you give the location and there's a model in it, it would be loaded automatically. So there's an if if uh, fails block down there, which which handles this part. And if the model name is given, like model name uh, would be like a model which has been already pre-trained. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes it clear like it is not on disk and it has to be loaded from okay. the spacey repository and something like that. Okay. So Great. That. Um. All right, and this let's let's try to like this would be something that that would be better written as a as a and than a all just for future Pythonic reference here because usually people would expect to see elif not config model name and path exists so I I see you're keeping symmetry here. Um, but probably probably best in the future to do it with an AND if you just have a couple of them, since that's what would be more Pythonic. Uh, All right. Yeah, just something to keep in mind, because other people will, as you, as you go to other projects, they're going to raise an eyebrow at that. Um, let's see, okay, we moved everything into base classes here. Okay. Parent, parent. No, right. We're still using purple features right now. So while making changes to all these files, I, I realized that there were a lot of uh, unused imports in a lot of files. Like, yeah, there were. <laughs> there are like a ton of unused imports everywhere. Uh, so it should be like, uh, I made an issue with uh, pre-commit stuff. Like it should Great. have something like auto I think I saw but, that. Yeah, I think what we were planning on doing was merging the accuracy staging stuff and then implementing... Yeah, either the the IO flake, oh, sorry, and the and I sort. I think that was what we were planning on doing. Um, but yeah, let's check out that pre-commit one. Okay, so so it is basically like going to prevent any further usage of un unused imports. But yep. like we would have to run like a script or something to just remove everything from. Yeah, yeah. I think there was something that, that knows how to do the auto room. Actually, I'm not sure who, what was what was the issue with that. I think we tried that. I can't remember. We'll find out when we go do it. But 
I think I remember we tried that at one point and then um, it wasn't entirely successful at figuring out what was used and what wasn't. So, so it, it might not sound like much like we are just importing some stuff, but it, it actually consumes time, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and that's the whole point of it being split up into plugins is because, yeah, I mean, when you're importing all of these ML libraries, that takes time. So we only want to import the ones that we uh, that we uh, um, care about. That is the whole point. Um, let's see. Dump on the exit. Great. And you move that from the train. Perfect. It's archive. Great. All right, great, perfect, nice, great, nice test. Um, let's see. Okay. So this actually eliminated the need for like creating any files and just Fantastic. Free Fantastic. All right, great. Let's merge this on in. Um, okay, and you add it to the change like so. Um, uh, So when I, when I merged from my other branch, which was having the directory structure patch, it, it was forked from master and these these uh, commits came from there. Yeah. So it might have been signed off with my name as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just thinking this is the thing about merging is now we have this nonlinear history. Um, so this is why it's nice to, to, to rebase. Um, so I'm like, how do we get, how can we, can we pull all these out in a way that, um, let's see what happens if we rebase. Okay. So what do we do? We, um, we check, so check out. So this is, should be up to date to ma with master. Okay. Check out. Um, what is this called? Um, uh, location. So, so can't we just like pick pick those uh, commits which we need and like just remove those ones and then get push for uh, get push for something like that? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. We should be able to. I'm I'm hoping we could be able to just rebase it because that should pick the same thing. So it should do the same thing. Um. But if not, yeah, we can cherry pick them all. All right, so we can check out. And then this branch is. Called support archive. Okay, let's see what happened here. So, um, wait a minute. Support archive storage for models. Does this correctly rebase it in? Updated to support archive. So, OK. 
Okay. Okay, we've got merge commits in here. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. How are we gonna do this? We may just squash it. Um, it'd be nice to have these as separate commits. Um, yeah. The problem with merge commits. The problem with merging is that then you end up with merge commits. Okay. So, uh, man, it would be great to have this whole history. And this, and this is why it, it took me a while to to, to get to this because I knew I was going to have to use the command line. And I didn't have my computer in front of me. Um, so let's see. Otherwise, I would have done this um, like on Friday. Let's see. So, to the software portal with the rest of the docs. Mm -hmm. Fix it. Merge branch. Okay. So, what does this look like when we graph with master? All right, so all right, so that's the point we split off there. Okay, is that show my simple model? Added extra check to interfix HTTP checks. There's another merge. There's another merge. Okay, how are we gonna do this? Um, let's see. Merge. Okay, we have what a few we merges. We're trying to grab. We're trying to grab as many commits as we, we would like to take this branch, um, and uh, rebase it onto onto master, um, so that we preserve all the commits that happened, um, the changes right over time, and and uh, as as we went through the support of of adding archive support for models. Um, now the issue is uh, we have some merge commits in here, and so. Um, right now we end up with, uh, we end up with the merge commits when we rebase, um, cause so, so we just did the rebase here. So we, we checked out master, created this new branch. Um, you know, we rebased in our support, um, uh, for models. Um, and now we have, um, and now we, we have, we have what we want, but we have merge commits in there All right for example here and so do you want to get uh, rid of those yeah that would be the goal uh, we, yeah i was going to suggest rebase interactive as well yeah i think that may be what we end up doing here so let's see so where so Let's see what happened when we did that graph today. So where did we split off? So was it here? Um, Okay, so this is all our commits. So, okay, base. Okay, support for add support for archives. Okay, yeah. So this was the first commit on this branch. So the question is, how do we get all these 
into um, so how do we get all the commits that are on one branch and not on the other branch okay um, okay so what we would like to do is we'd like to rearrange okay rubase can we do that what is uh, base merge uh, I've always squashed these before but you have a lot of stuff so let's see so it would be great to keep it another series. interrupted All right, so there's a command from page branch. Two more commits. You don't have to roll, obviously. Um, All right, okay. So which commits? Are from this branch to so support okay, okay. DF archive model docs. Um, man, this is a, this is a, this is hairy. Okay. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? Um, I think I'm, we may just squash it. Uh, it's really annoying now. Um, let's see. Minor cleanup. We can can we squash it and like added support for our storage? Yeah. That could be, I mean, it all has to happen at, at one time anyways. Um, let's just see what it looks like squash. Well, we already saw what it looks like squash. All right, okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, or was it support archives? Okay, so here would be the patch applied as one. Okay. What am I not adding here? There should be several things I'm not adding, okay.
I think that's correct. Er, yeah. All right, so this should be the full contents of the patch. Um, I should say location load. Let's take a look at location save and location load real quick. So. Right, great. Okay, so we'll probably want to test out having location save and location load set after we merge this. And we can play with that. So, all right, let's just merge this right now. So, commit. Um, and let's see, what did we do the other day? So. When was this? Here we go. We'll fix our problem of uh, 23 U18 UTC. Um, let's see. Problem solved. I can never remember the sequence of, uh, I can never remember the sequence of numbers here. Did you just choose random numbers for your email or did you? Uh... Mm, that, that's my birthday. Oh, it is. Oh, I always get confused when things are, um, um, I always get confused because we do, uh, we do, um, different date format in the US. That's why I've started doing uh, that's why I've started doing um Yeah we have D D M M Y by the way. Yeah that's, that's right. Oh my gosh. That always throws me off. Git log. Okay, so when was this? So um, yeah, it got merged right right then. If anybody is if Google comes knocking then and doesn't watch this video, then this is when it got merged. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't need trick. Like, I, I used it once in my college assignments, like, just to tell the faculty, like, you just didn't see the change. It was there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I did that too. <laughs> uh, no, no, it was there. <laughs> and a lot of college faculties are not very familiar with kids. So yeah. Believe you. Easy, easy, easy win. Um, let's see. So, okay. So, what is this? I mean, uh, this is model archive support okay so i feel like there was some other stuff that we noted here so fixes um does this close that issue 662 662 okay great it's um, already closed. okay it's already closed oh yeah that's right because it keeps it keeps wanting to close it um damn it github okay um what else do we have? So you said something, uh, wait, we made some changes. We just talked about it. Um, you were telling me about how I want to put this in the, in the, um, in the commit message. So, uh, you were telling me a, minute, a second ago here about how uh, we made some changes. Where was it? So we pulled things out of base classes. So let's try to write a good commit message here. So uh, pulled um, many uh, or pulled uh, a enter slash a exit. Um, out of context classes uh, put okay I don't know why I always do this okay so pull the inner out of context classes put 
in parent classes. Um, what else do we do here? Um, we what are other notable things that happened during this? Um, I added a tutorial for uh, those uh, that archive support. So we added a tutorial for archive support. Um, I feel like there's one more thing we just talked about and then we missed. Um, we consolidated some base classes. Okay, great. You finally, finally, finally that TensorFlow stuff. That's been two years in the making. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We've had an open AR that needs to be like, oh, we need to go consolidate that. Uh, what happened? Just you, you consolidated the TensorFlow base classes. So good job. Uh, let's see. Like you put you put them into their own file because they had lived in that DNNC for since dawn of time. Okay, so we also changed the spacey model name. So uh, spacey model name or path was changed to model name. That's probably something we should put in the change log here, because uh, that would be a breaking change for users. So, uh, spacey model name or path. So, since yeah, since we have a breaking like this would be a change for end users, we'd want to put this in the change log. So, spacey model name or path was changed to model name. Uh, functionality is the same. Uh, it still accepts a name or a path. Okay. No, it does, doesn't. Ex it uh, doesn't accept, accept a path. path. It doesn't accept a path. That, that's why it's been changed, right? Oh, okay. Because, so because they're already giving a location there. If there is already a path, so. Um. Okay. So, so from the location, we can load the model directly. If we give the location folder, it automatically loads it. OK, so was that the, so, the so what was modeled location previously then for Spacey? It was where the location would be saved. And like it was a bit ambiguous to me. Maybe, maybe uh, like uh, it was written by, I have to check the flame. Yeah, it was written by um, uh, Himachu, I believe. OK. So, all right, okay, so let's deep in, delve into this more then. Um, okay, so, model name or path. Okay, spacey load. So if that is not none otherwise, we create a blank model. So was location being used at all, I think, is the main question. So if I config that location. Then we save it to disk. OK, but what were we using location for before? So when we first added this, what did location 
or wait, directory it would be. And did it even exist? Output dir. Okay, so self dot parent. Save to disk. Okay, so then we load it. We'd load from the output directory um, when we do accuracy and predict. So now, okay, so we eliminated the load self.nlp, so that went into a enter, and we did the load on the model path. So enter so we run the data flow um, so a exit we save to disk model path so south path okay that uses tempter okay so we load config model name model name so so, if so we have a model at, name, at the, at the most like, uh, let, like, let me uh, sort of clear it up for you because earlier it was like uh, it would like go ahead and use the model name or path if the path is there or not. It doesn't depend. It doesn't man matter. And it was like a bit ambiguous for like what we are using. Are we using the location we are checking there while we are raising the model, not trained error? But in other cases, we are loading from model name or path. So I just unified it, and now we uh, either use the model name, uh, which is being loaded from the Spacey uh, side, like Spacey would load that model for you. It is a pre-trained model or, or a pipeline, something like that. And otherwise, if, if you have given a location, it would lo load from a location. OK. Um, and like, like we clearly make it clear like uh, whether we have loaded from disk or we have loaded from the model name they have given. So what's with this if statement? So shouldn't we just be looking at if model path exists and then we load and then otherwise if model name exists then we load model name Otherwise, we fall through. Like, why? No, actually, why is this? It might, might have been something I, I just have to recall, but what okay. happened there? Okay, let me just go change. Because so, yeah, I think I think it's probably the correct bodies, but I think we could probably simplify that logic, you know, because um, that's pretty. Okay, so All right, I mean, that's what we should be looking at, right? So if model path exists and then load it, or wait, then load model path. So if model path exists, load model path. If model name exists, then load model name. And if neither of them exist, then load the blank English model, right? Mm, yes, that, that sounds good to me. I, I might have like overcomplicated it. Oh, that's okay. that's okay. Just this is why we're doing review, right? Um, so if self.nlp. So, um, okay, so yeah, so we shouldn't have an event where self NLP is none. Um, okay. So we shouldn't have an event where NLP is none now. So let's see. So it should always try to load the saved model. 
now how does the accuracy or let's see we don't have an accuracy anymore so train so it's not doing any checking anymore okay so and this just check to see if that existed so it's just gonna get I'm just wondering okay so the you know we're saving it to disk uh, before I think before let's see so previously we only saved Where was this? Um, so previously we only saved on train. So, or was this train? Yeah, I think so. So previously we only saved on train. And so now when we go to predict, we raise model not train not not found other error if the path doesn't exist to so model path so okay and that I think is still what we want to be doing here so parent model path I think that's still what we want to be doing here because uh, that is the same logic we use to decide whether we loaded a model right so that should be fine um, is the, the logic of our like in those errors is completely same. It's just been converted to path loop. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. This I just wanted to make sure because that we weren't checking for the existence of NLP or something because NLP is always going to be loaded. So this looks good. All right. Um, so while, while exiting the context in base classes, I have always checked like if the object has been initialized because. In, in certain cases, like if only someone predicts or does something like that, uh, the model may not be there in the memory. And in such cases, like we are, well, well, I saw some cases where the models were dumping uh, like uh, incorrect binary objects, which was not, not at all useful while loading and would create errors in the future. So I just took, did that extra if there. Great, great. Okay, so. So that's, but that's not the same as this if block, right? No, no, that is yeah. that is whole different thing. Like it is like right. now looking very redundant. I just don't okay, know. Okay, That's that's. I just want to make sure. I th I thought so, but I just want to make sure. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. So let's just double check this change. So model path exists. Spacey load. Okay, so lf config model name. And, uh, all right. Okay. Great, so space so model name or path has changed to model name. All right, so uh, change to model name. So um, I think. I think that if you point it at a spacey, okay, yeah, I think this is what it is. I think if you point it at, so if you don't have something in location, um, and you point it at a at a, there's a space like another. They have a diff, they have a, they have a format that they store those models that 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 you you access by name. Those are stored on disk in some specific format. Um, and if you point it at one of those, it it loads that model, like that pre-trained model. So uh, in their format, rather than you know in our higher you know higher level of abstraction format. So I think the functionality does remain the same. It just yeah, the functionality remains the same. It just um, hmm. 
Yeah. So like the download with Spacey models are like uh, similar to some path which is in the Spacey folder mm -hmm. inside there. So that's how they do it. Generally, yeah. they are generally they fail linking those models, and uh, that that might 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 uh, create loading issues. So that was just the thing. So sorry, can you say that again? So so like it, it should essentially work as a uh, model name or path was working. That is right, but like I was just telling, like how Spacey does it. Spacey yeah, it resolves. It creates a symlink, and it generally fails in doing that. I've seen that. Oh yeah, that's funny. All right. Um. So so I think the functionality is preserved. Then right? Is that are you in agreement on that? Mm, yes. Yes. It, okay. it, it is the same. Okay. Okay. So. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if we should change it then, if it's the same functionality, you know, because um, it is a name or path that accepted. Um, well, you know, we've already changed it. Um, let's just get it merged. Um, plus, we we haven't declared API stability yet, so it doesn't really matter. All right. Um, Okay, so it was changed the model name. Is there anything else significant that happened here that was more than just uh, um, that was that was more than than just the patch? Let's see. No, no, I guess everything else was like a major refactor, but nothing changed yeah. on the user side. Okay. Great. Okay. Cool. I think we've captured this thing. Okay. All right, let's do it. So let's just go ahead and grab both these while we're at it. So where is... We'll close it manually. Um, all right. So then we also have our our or our operations, our cleanup operations. So anything else on your end, um, Sahil? No, that's it. Okay, great. Okay, so add data cleanup operations. All right. Okay, and yep, I added the change log in there. Great. Okay, cool. I think that was the only thing, right? And then we had to do, um, what was the thing that we were doing after this? Uh, we have to, like, rename. Oh, yeah, we have to rename. Rename the thing, yes. So merge, um, yeah, that's important. Okay, so merge. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's go and grab that. Where'd that go? Okay, yeah, and so that's the only change since last time. Great, perfect. This feeling. Okay, it looks like operations data. All oh, plugins. Operations data. All right, it looks like we've got some failures here. Okay, this is just double checking CI stuff. Um, 
let's see, yeah, I think this is just double checking that everything's getting tested in the CI. So yeah, the documentation part is uh, not getting tested. Okay. Yes, because we will have to have then a data set in the package. Okay. Yes. So, oh yeah, because we have to download the data set. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Actually, it's on Kaggle, so we cannot also curl or wget it. Can you just create like a little dummy data set for the purposes of running the, the demo? Right. So could you create a KC house data with with, you know, fake data in it so that the commands will at least run, you know, just like one row? Uh, what I can do is actually take the data set and like keep like 100 records or 50 records of it. We can do it that way. OK, I'm concerned. OK, so the one thing about that is like I'm not sure like what is the if there's any sort of legal or licensing requirements about that. Right. And it being distributed. Through uh, okay, go ahead. Like, I don't know, but let's check. I point. saw it. It was like public domain. But... Oh, okay, public domain. Well, then, yeah, we can include it in here. Public domain. Perfect. All right, great. Um, thank you. Good job finding that. Um, and then this one is the mushroom. So let's just verify this one as well. Um, okay, public domain. Perfect. Safe to eat or deadly poison. <laughs> yeah. That's a... All right. Okay. So yeah, let's just go ahead and. All right. So, how should we do this? Um. Hmm. Let's see. Mushroom CSV. Convert records to the source config file. Hmm. How do we do this? Um. What is the best way? So I think so. Let's push this guy up. Okay, great. All right, nice job. Archive support merged, um, and then we can say you no know, merged via. Just commit, and then that way nobody can argue about the timing. Okay. Closed via, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Oops, wrong pull request. All right, great. All right, good, very good, got it. Nice work. All right, so let's see. This. Okay. All right, so we need to figure out how are we going to get these um, data sets in here in a way that we can run the tests. So. Um, We can have like bash files for it. Um, like the like, way we tested for the ice cream sales, we had the bash files which actually used to run all of the commands. Oh, oh yeah. Um, well, I mean, like all of the shell commands that we have in the tutorial. Yes. Well, let's see. Is there a way? 
Ideally, we could just download. Do you need it? Won't it will make me get an account, won't it? Um, okay. It's only 2.4 megabytes. Yep. 21,000 records on there. Okay. Um, 21,000 records. All right. I feel like mm. Do you have a copy of the data set? I assume yes. you do. Could you just mm -hmm. upload it into the pull request by dragging and dropping it? <laughs> um, let's see. Upload it in the pull request. Like if you just drag and drop it into a comment, if you drag and drop the CSV file, like it will probably upload. Okay, I'll try. Let's see. Okay, the other thing. Okay, yeah, let's try that. And then, because then we'll have it. So, yeah, upload. Do try that for both of them. You might have to rename the file extension to like .txt, .csv, .txt. So then we'll have that. Uh, so. Yep, I uploaded it. All right, great. Let's do that for both of them then. Thanks. Okay, so then we need to make sure that these guys get run. No setup. Okay. Yep, both are uploaded. highlighting correctly I wonder um. So this is the house data. What happens if I run this? Great. Fantastic. All right. 
So now we've got the data set. This is the house data set. And here's the mushroom data set. All right, great. So we've uploaded them. They're public domain, so that's all good there. Um, okay, so now we need to make sure that these things get tested. Um, so, so let's see. Um, all right. So what was it yelling at us about? I think it was yelling at us about the fact that it wanted these here um, examples did clean up So now we've got those. So it should stop complaining in the CI check there. What else was it complaining about here? Okay. Um, it was complaining about. Oops. It was complaining. Okay, yeah, it was complaining. It didn't have these. And then was there anything else it was mad about? No, just that. All right. Oh, that's Mac OS. Maybe there's another one on Linux. Okay, and it's complaining that we don't have operations data listed in plugins. Okay, so different plugins. So we need to make sure we have operations data. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we're going to test them now. We have them listed in the thing. We or we have them listed in the, our list of plugins. Um, now we need to make sure. So I think we just need to make sure that these console test commands are um, correct here. So we just need to add the uh, add the. Uh, shell prompt in front of them to make sure they run because uh, that's what will tell it to run them um, to tell them that their commands to run and not output uh, okay so now we should be able to run that example okay so test docs equals one and then this would be data flow or data cleanup. Um, Okay, we install DFMO. We download the house data set. And principal component analysis failed to load principal component analysis. Oh, okay, so we need to show that we we need to show installing and let me go check out that. Come on. We need to show the install command, I believe. Where 
is it? Dare clean up. All right, so it looks like we have this identically named, which we probably need to do as well. So we probably need to change the titles on these. Um, so let's see how sales is this one we're looking at right now. Yeah. Okay, and it looks like, okay, so we need to make sure that there's no spaces there. Do that. Oops. All right. So yeah. So we ran the docs build. We double checked that the formatting was correct. We saw that uh, these need to. We can't have spaces in between here. Um, so we found out that when we ran the test. Um, so. First installed cleanup, data cleanup operations. So we found out that we need to make sure that they installed uh, the cleanup operations. Operations data. Is that correct? Is it operations data? Or is it oper uh, model? Is it operations or operation? I can't remember. DFFML. DFFML. Operation. Let me just make sure that we're running just this guy because this is annoying. Uh, do a clean up. Instead of doing dash K, we will do. Okay, so we're running this, the just the KC house data set tutorial. So operation data, so it's not operation data, it must be operations data. Okay, so let's rerun the tutorial again. So it installs the FML for our setup. It installs the data operations. Um, and then it downloads the house data set. It runs the cleanup operations. And it trains the model. Oh, okay, so we also need to make sure that we're installing model scikit. All right, so let's take a look at our tutorial now. All right, so it has our install command. Um, we're going to need to change the title. Um, we do the download, um, run the cleanup operations. Uh, okay, so I don't think we, yeah, we don't need these sh. Actually, we don't need these uh, titles here because we, we we don't need a title on it unless we uh, unless we're I mean you could put those in a file but then you would want to show then you want to say like uh, you know if you put if you put a file name above it you would probably you would you it, the expectation is that they're writing the content into the file right and then you would want to show a command of them executing that file yeah. right um, yeah. and my guess is that that was sort of your workflow right um, now so you can so you can use the you can use the 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 console test test infrastructure to to run the tests i know that it's probably it's probably so let's see how do we make that easier because that i know that there's some overhead involved there because you end up with the reinstall so i wonder okay so maybe we could make it so that we don't do the um the virtual invite creation and the pip install command, and then it would just rerun each of these commands. Um, let's see, because that would speed up the iteration on testing. 
for our tutorials. So, because my guess is you you had those sh files, right? And you were running each one that had issues, right? So you keep yep. you ran each one, right? So yes. yeah, and and then you know now we want to move it into this mode where it's tested as the tutorial. So how do we make it easier for people writing like you were to to uh, you know to to just to own, to not have to do two ways right to just to just do it in the final product way um, so maybe if we added an option because was was the main so what was the reason why was it because it's too slow with the virtual environment creation because I find that that's one of the reasons for me that I that I do similar things um, was it uh, you know was it that was it something else um, what 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 was the what was the you know was it just familiarity um or or so what was what was the reasoning behind why why you tested it um you know why we didn't test it in yeah, i mean you also didn't have the data set so so i guess we need the ability to um not run it we need the ability to probably skip the install stuff right because you already have this installed um yeah. Yeah, that would save time. That would make it easier to use console test stuff right out of the box, um, you know, for the existing testing infrastructure like I was running it here in the bottom left corner. Um, and then we need the ability to run from a specific directory probably because you probably had the KC house data set set up already, right, instead of in a temporary directory. Yeah. Um, okay. So would those, would do, so yeah, those, would those two things be helpful? And is there anything else that would be helpful for, for running the console test docs? I think that is it. Okay. Okay, let's do that then. So let's add a bug for GH issue. Actually, uh, I did not go with the test because I thought maybe it's going to take a lot of space and it's going to take a lot of time mm -hmm. yeah and well mm -hmm. and and it will create a new virtual environment right by default yes. and so so let's let's make it easier to uh, uh run during development of docs okay so um so uh we should Add the ability to skip skip um, running the uh, virtual environment creation. Uh, we should add the ability to not run in a tempter and instead run in a pre you know, a predefined directory. All right, and that should probably um, that should probably speed things up. And then we need to make we need to probably better document how we write these. Um, you know what the because I think we have documented. You know, writing a tutorial is writing a restructured text file. The console test stuff is documented, but the workflow of how do you go through and write the tutorial and validate it and, and run the stuff that you're documenting that probably could be gone we, we might be able to well let's see actually i think i made a video on that um i think we have a video on that maybe we just need to link to it so that's that's another thing that we have done so yep like yesterday you put up a video on youtube okay yeah so uh, test driven operate yeah so oh. we should Link to test driven development video uh, from testing .rst to docs. And anything, so yeah, anything that you guys have learned, you guys have learned a lot of stuff over the, the course of this, right? And, and uh, so if you if you have any learnings that you can pass on, you know, then then you know you could just you can do it in something as easy as just jotting it down in an issue and we'll try to document it at some point 
But if you can write it on the docs site, that would be great, right? Because there's a lot of things about how we go about development that it, that are tricky to learn. Um, uh, we should link to, um, okay, what was the other one? So link to, oh, console test uh, somewhere uh, from, oh yeah, the docs. Uh, the video writer is testable documentation with Sphinx control console test extension. Yes, that's the one. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. For some reason, I can't find that when I go on. It's I, I don't know, understand where I uploaded it through some. I couldn't find it on the main thing. I had to actually search for it, so thanks. Um, I would have been looking for it again. Okay, so... I have like the bell icon on activated on that. Oh, you do. Uh, TFFML right. videos. So That's sweet. I get a mail switch. Cool. All right. Okay. So let's. Um, yeah. And if you guys want to make videos about anything, that would be great. Because I think, you know, we all have. And we were going to do. Okay. So today ran long because we're trying to merge, uh, you know, our final stuff here. Um, but uh, we were. What, what the hell is the problem here? Oh, God, what is this? I put up here. Okay, so this looks like it's not happy with something. All right, so today ran long. We wanted to present, right? But um, obviously we didn't get a chance and we're already over. So let's try to target presenting next week then. Um, and Hashim, do you want to do that next week? Because um, you finished up first, so I want to give you the opportunity to present first. Then, is that do you want to present first, or do you want to do you want to go at a, a different time, not next week, or some other time? Or yeah, I can do next week. No okay, worries. cool. So we'll plan on next week for to hear, you know, you take us through the notebooks and stuff, um, sure, and and multi output and just give us demos, right? And then we can cut those up. We'll cut those up. What we'll do is you can run us through each notebook during the meeting. We'll cut it off and then we'll post them all as separate. We'll post the meeting recording and then we'll post them all as separate videos and we'll post your little demo of multi-output as a separate video. So then all of a sudden we'll have like six videos. <laughs> so that'll be sweet. All right. Um, yeah. And it's just our regular meeting. So this looks like... Um, this looks like, and if you guys ever want to do other videos, um, you know, I can put them on the main page or we can just link to them from the docs. Uh, like I can upload them to the main um, YouTube account um, or you can do them and we can link to them. So that, because that's always great. Uh, so you value I know Let I don't. Me, uh, yeah. Going through the documentation of the notebooks or uh, in the Jupyter notebook? Uh, well, I just meant like you'll you'll run us through how your tutorial work. Like you'll run us through the the, the notebooks that you created, right? Um, you'll just sort of give us a talk over you know running each block and explaining what's going on, right? All right, sure. Uh, anything else you want to do too? But I think that that's probably. And and in my case, how how would I show like what the, the changes I've done? Well, I would basically that's say pretty much transparent. To the yeah, user. exactly. Yeah, yours is pretty transparent. So I would say, why don't we have you, um, you know, give us a demo, right? And you could use a couple models. Um, so let's see. So demo. Uh, uh, show how you um, save and load. A model, uh, you know, two different models. Um, um, so, like, you know, not not from the same plugin, and you can use an existing tutorial. Or a simple, like a quick to train data set. Um, you know, and it can be a little fake data set too. Um, so, and then the other thing was okay, so 
that data set load or the data flow load that would be an existing data flow um, I wonder okay I'm uh, wondering. we have a notebook on save and saving and loading models you could just edit that as well oh yeah yeah um yeah let's see Hmm. Well, you did, I mean, so you wrote that notebook, but maybe would you be comfortable with uh, Sahil then presenting that notebook, but with the uh, changes, you know, you could say, hey, Hashim, yeah, did this. Yeah, that, that would be yeah. perfect. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah, then we get a little works. collaboration there as well, right? That's always good. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. Let's do that then. Um, so, so, let's, all right. Yeah, because you'll, you, you'll probably be, uh, you'll probably be, um, um, you, you, you'll have taken us through a lot of notebooks that day anyway, so shame. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll be featured a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll take us through notebooks uh, and multi-output demo. Okay. All right, so, and then let's have you have uh so we'll do model saving and loading notebook uh so let's uh oh yeah and you can just edit it on the fly so you can take us through it and then you can edit it so uh, take us through uh then edit to uh save in directories uh, then take us through again. All right, great. Uh, that should be good, right? Or any comments on that? That sounds good. All right, cool, sweet. Um, so then we'll cut up those demo, or we'll cut up all those videos and put them on the website or on the YouTube, and then we'll link to them from each page. So that way, now all the notebooks will have. The notebook and they'll have a video for it and then um we'll link to the video from the 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 one we'll link the model saving and notebook loaded this 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 video will also link to it from that little restructured text uh documentation you made um so that we've got videos there so we'll have videos that'll be six pages that have videos now from five notebooks and then the multi-output stuff we'll put a video link into the scikit model docs and then sudhancho yours will just be your tutorials have your video links um, okay that'll be great that'll be really sweet um okay so what are we doing right now okay we're still doing this so i think that um so it looks like there's some more work that we need to do here um to make sure that this passes now it may it's probably it's likely my machine because my machine has been real weird lately um but uh if you could get this cleaned if you could if you could finish this out um similar to what we did here um yep. then yeah then maybe you can push it and i can test it. that sounds great and then we will mm -hmm. commit it with the uh when we'll commit it post post dated um <laughs> when we're done in case yeah. anybody gets annoyed uh, so. mm, by the way, the one which you just merged uh, hasn't been in the data, it should have been. Uh, the uh, one I just merged? Mm, yes. It well, shows I, the base data itself. When you look at the, so I'm not sure, can you make the UI say something different? or? Uh, I guess I, it, it used to be a few months back when I used it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was in the past comment. I have... Uh, I have not had success with being able to change this time here, but the commit data itself, um, this has been accurate for me. Um, Cause this, this will put the correct date that we put in there. Um, but I haven't been able to get it to change when I pushed it. I'm not sure. I think it does that based on when it maybe, maybe it was like in private repository in my case. So it ah, might okay. have oh yeah, so it might have not. It might have just took taken your word for it. 
Yeah, I think this is their defense against that, <laughs> is they just say when you push the commit up to them. Now, that doesn't mean that it wasn't committed at a different time, but they, they I think they they do it based on when things are pushed. So, um, so uh, or let's see, so this would be, um, you know. Just like they have the server, they know when it was pushed. Exactly, yeah, I think that's what they do for public repos, at least then, so in the event that people are like us and are trying to trick other people. So, let's see. Um, so, version of state of model socket, so add. Okay. So we add the operation data plugin, it add data cleanup. Um, yeah, and let's rename those tutorials to something more. Um, you know, more descriptive, right? You could say data cleanup, and then this is, you know, KC house data set and mushroom classification, right? So this could be this one. This one's our regression example, right? So let's see. I would say let's let's rename this to, you know, house sales regression, and this one mushroom classification, right? Okay. Okay, so. You know, or something better. That's just my saying something. So let's give tutorials more descriptive titles. Because they're already under um, data set cleanup. Uh, they're already going to say data set cleanup, right? So uh, on the side. So then we don't need to say it twice. So um, I think that looks great. Though. OK, so classification uh, download. I'm really hoping they don't start like kicking things like this upload file stuff off, because that's been very helpful for certain things. I think we were having a lot of issues for a while with um, um, like the uh, the Iris data set that server went on and off. We uploaded it to the GitHub issue comment, and uh, psh, no more issues. <laughs> so okay. data cleanup. Um, house. Housing. Um, Up, console test commands and install uh, dependencies. All right, All right. So that should be those changes there. Um, okay. So anything else we want to talk about today? I know we've gone a long, long, long time here. So we did a lot of debugging and review. So well, a lot of review mainly. So. So Hashim, I know. I have some non gsoc stuff. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Uh, so about the optimizer plugin, uh, are, am I good to change it? Oh yeah, go for change it. The name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what did so name change to what, what was it? The tuners. Uh, tuner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So do we also, does this make sense? I mean, so yeah, I think tuner, a tuner makes sense to me, um, you know, before we end up changing it and then maybe thinking that we change it again. So does every, everybody, could you fill everybody in on the background again real quick so we're all 
make sure we're up to speed and then everybody can comment. So. Yeah, yeah so I was uh, building some deep learning models the other day and uh, they have this uh, these uh, optimizing functions, optimizing algorithms, and you have to set the optimize uh, flag to uh, a name of optimizing algorithm. So uh, it came to me that uh, the name of these optimizers could, uh, you know, be easily confused with those optimizing plugins. Uh, while these optimizers are uh, not really uh, op like those optimizing algorithms, they are just uh, uh, tuning the hyperparameters. So uh, we could change the name to something more suitable. Mm, so sounds sounds right. Yep, it sounds good. Cool. Um, all right, so let's change the name to Tuner. Uh, everyone agrees. All right, okay. Sweet. All right, let's do it. Um, and I think I pinned that issue actually too. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Change plugin name. Radium high level accuracy to score. There's another thing. Um, okay. So. That's an example. Da, da, da. Okay. Oh, Regarding the also, dogs theme, uh -huh, yeah, you were saying something. Hashim, go on. I also also wanted to ask about uh, the tests and examples for parameter grid. All right. What should we talk about here? Uh, like, what kind of uh, tests do we want? Uh, like uh, for uh, I saw that uh, for MSC and CLF we just we are just having examples and uh, tutorials and just testing those examples. I don't think we have a direct test for that. So are we going to do it like that or? I mean, so so I'm of the I'm of the mind that that any coverage is fine if if it happens to be tested via tutorial, uh, then that's fine in my mind i think it's i think i think there's okay so there's yeah i think i'm i'm of the mindset that um m you know more tutorials more tutorials that validate functionality is more helpful for us as a project than uh more unit tests uh because as we've seen like we have a lot of unit tests like to say the least so at this and and we one of the things that you know every project and including us always struggles with even though we've done a pretty good job is is documentation so if you can if you're true if you if you, any if at any point you're you're deciding you know what should i make a test or should i maybe spend a little bit more time and make a, a document that also tests it that also results in a test case then i would say you know go ahead and make the document right um, because that, that at the end of the day, that's, uh, you know, no one can use our stuff unless we document it. Right. So the more documentation we have, the better. And if our documentation results in code coverage test wise, then it's just as good as a unit test or, a, you know, a standard Python test under tests in my mind. Uh, so we don't have to bother with it because we have a notebook already that's doing that. Right. Okay. Yeah. If it's testing it via the notebook, then that's cool. Yeah. All right. Now I would say, so if it's testing it via the notebook, yeah, then that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. There is the one trade-off. There is that um, obviously we've moved all the document testing to you know under that test docs environment variable. So if for any reason, if if this, if you anticipate some kind of feature being something that um let's see so it, it really depends on on what kind of i think i think it also largely depends on on what kind of thing you're talking about in this case i think it's it's good as is now if we're talking about like some internal utility function that gets implemented and then added you know used all over the place 
the documentation tests are not a good place to rely on 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 that right you would want a unit test because you would want somebody who changes something to immediately see the feedback because they're probably not going to run then they may run the entire test suite but they might not run all the doc tests locally um, so in that case we may want to you know that's that's a place where a python test is definitely preferred um and that's i don't know i'm just explaining my thinking on that so yeah that makes sense cool all right um uh notebook test it right now okay great um cool anything else we want to talk about today uh, no that's it thank you so sudhanshu let's let's I, i'm sure you're on it but yeah let's try to get this cleaned up as asap and then uh you know I'll, I'll post state merge it just let me let me know when um and i'm yep. going to submit you guys' evaluations um this week you guys all i mean you guys know you you all passed um you did a great job um you guys all did yeah you guys all did an exceptional job uh, so so thank you to all of you and and you know good luck and, and great work um so i hope i hope of course that you guys continue and hang around um on the project we've got, we've got you know there's a there's we've we've done so much but there's always more to do um i think there's gonna be i mean obviously we've got some exciting stuff coming up here when we can do i think we did we did a lot of there was you guys especially did a lot of stuff that was final polishing stuff that was needed that we knew we needed before we did a beta release um so i think we're pretty close to being able to do a beta release here and hopefully we can get um you know hopefully that we've got everything hopefully that we have everything and we have everything documented by the time we get to that point where you know this is we're, we're at a place where we're very fully featured enough um that people can get a lot of uh of value out of out of using the project right um so i think that we've got many aspects of things but there's obviously still areas that we need to polish more um so and if you guys have any anything any thoughts about anything please make sure to write them down somewhere right either in the issues or in the discussions um because uh let's see general like let's just start a general improvement so uh so 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 one thing i was thinking yeah. about from a long time was yeah. uh, improving how data flows are made yeah, that's definitely one where we need to do it. I, I had put an issue out here the other day. Um, let's see, yeah, something, well, yeah, that was more of a, yeah, improving how data flows are made. So we had a, there is, there is a web UI. So are you thinking about like, are you thinking about, because there's, so, so part of the, the data flow thing is that, you know, ideally it would be something that could be done from like a GUI. Um, and so we have, if you, if you have interest in doing web development, there is a web UI started um, to do some of this stuff. If, are you, or, or I assume you're also thinking about, you know, Python syntax and stuff. Yes, actually well. the Python syntax, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about that because because it, it becomes uh, very verbose very quickly. Yes, it does. It was, it was, it so, so a simpler approach could be like uh, something like PyTorch does. Uh, in their forward function in general classes, uh -huh. so a, a function could be a data flow, and it has it could just take in uh, data from one another, uh, like you know how the layers interact in PyTorch, how they execute it. Uh, let's see. One second. Uh, so I I haven't thought it like very very thoroughly yet, but uh, that is just an idea. Yeah. Where we can, like, okay. So that. let's see. Um. Yeah. We know we need. Uh uh well i'm gonna let you go ahead and comment on this um that way you can sort of write down what you just said there um so let's see general improvements one one another thing that i wanted to bring up i might have brought it up before like there are a lot of instances where people like tag you specifically like i like, had the red pd journey yeah but 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 it it happens to be like they are uh, very uh, different, uh, like like you never uh, take time to look at them on such a questions maybe yeah. uh, left un unanswered. So is it okay with you, like if, if we come up and answer the stuff? Oh please, yeah please. I can't, I can't, 
I, 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 I wish that I could go and answer everything, but I haven't been able to. Um, yeah, honestly. yeah, like, like for one person answering 262 issues is to like something, yeah, something exactly. impractical. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and you know, a lot of these are things that we've come up with in meetings, and and I happen to be the submitter because we talked about it, and then I wrote the issue, but then. You know, that means that I then get tagged on, I get mentioned anytime somebody were to comment on it. Um, and so, yeah, I, my, uh, my, you know, RIP, my GitHub notifications. So um, then my work is all. So I've been trying to go in and check them more frequently, um, but I know that I've missed stuff. So definitely if you guys like, and as you, if you stay around on the project, then uh, please yeah, it's, it's, feel free to answer people. The other thing that I've been thinking about, so when we talked about this with the second party plugin stuff, so we need to get to a architecture where, um, so we really need to get to an architecture where um, I'm, I'm not the, the gating function on, on merging stuff. Um, because this is, you know, right right now, unfortunately, we're, we're bound by the, the Intel org rules. Um, and they can't add outside people to it. So I was thinking that we should probably move this to a different GitHub org. And so I created the um, DFFML org. Um, so now the main thing um, that happened here is that this is, um, this is gonna be, so at first we were just thinking, okay, this will be the place to store the second party plugins. Um, and this initially happened when we moved out this model transformers because of some API breaking changes. Um, so Yash and, and, uh, and Saksham are, are on here as, as, uh, admins. So we had, um, we, we need to, we need to basically take the main. So here's, here's, looking forward and before we get to the beta release um what do we got going on here oh no what happened here um before we get to the beta release the main thing that we need to do is split this out so that um so that we need to take all the plugins out of this main code base and put them in their own repos um really cryptography um and, so, so I yeah. have like seen that issue, but I, I think that, that that might bring in a new thing that is going to be like uh, then installing plugins in a systematic way because there would be clashing dependencies because uh, as we decouple them, currently it is in the same packet, so we have to adhere by same dependencies. But when we when we break it down into smaller pieces, it would have you know, their own dependencies. And exactly. We well, so right stuff. now everything does. So so the main thing is that right right now it all does function like that. Um, so it we just have it all in the same repo. Um, the main issue. So there is. Let's see. Let me find. So we might need something like a mini package manager, which which actually resolves dependencies in a way systematic way something like that so okay so so let's see let's go over the the adr um okay so um all right have you read through this mm, no no i haven't read okay through. let's okay so so i Okay, so 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 let's. If you're interested in this, uh, Yash and Saksham and I have have been uh, have been working on this for a few months now. So so read through this, um, and we've had you know we've had off and on progress here. But so read through this. This is essentially what we've figured out up until the uh, up until this point, point. Um, and uh, the main issue that we we have found that we run into. Um, is with documentation and maintaining documentation across um, uh, across the plugins. Um, from a dependency resolution standpoint, we've come up with this uh, tiered support level um, model, where support level one is essentially um, let's see what was support level one. Uh, so support level one. Okay, so we have this concept of you know, first party, 
which is the main package, right, DFFML. Second party, which is any plugins that we that will gate release for. Um, so, and you can think, so we, we, you know, DFML can sort of be thought of almost like a, a, a Linux distro, but for, you know, machine learning packages. Um, and, you know, the point of an, an OS distro is to find all the packages that work together. And then, you know, those, that's your distro is everything that works together. Um, and that's sort of the dependency resolution that happens, right? Um, so for, um, for this, the way that we're applying it here, we've said, okay, so, so DFML support level zero is the main package. Support level one, uh, second party plugins are plugins that we own, um, sort of like, um, so, so that would be all of the things in the repo right now, right? We have like, I think 23 different plugins um, that are available for install um, that, that work with the main package right and expose models or operations or sources or whatever um, and so we need to decide which one of the which which plugins are support level one plugins meaning that if they those if those plugins don't work together at the moment like their dependencies clash then we don't release um, so we for example if if tensorflow um, depended on a certain numpy version and SciPy um, uh, or, or sklearn depended on a different NumPy version, version, right? In that case, um, we we would probably we would say these are both, and those are both. So, if we said TensorFlow and Scikit are support level one plugins, um, then we wouldn't do a release unless a user is able to install both of them in the same environment. Does that make sense? I think. Yes, sir. it does. Yeah, like I think that's what you were saying. Months. Yeah, yes, I think exactly. that's relatively what you were saying. Yeah, so that part we've sort of ironed out via this support level model, right? And the the validation that we're going to do on that is essentially so that plugins.py file that we have, um, that will turn into this plugins.json file, so it can be not dynamically created because it really doesn't need to be. Um, and that will contain information on what all the other plugins are, um, and uh, you know how how we like what what Git repo they're at, um, etc. Um, we still need to work on that a little bit more. So um, then support level two would be okay. They're second party, but we don't care if they fail. For example, we took out model transformers, so this is now a support level two plugin. So it's second party because we own the code, um, but. Uh, and we have rights to push and make changes to it, so it's second party. Um, but we didn't. We we decided it didn't matter. So it had no tutorials associated with it, so no end user facing documentation. So we thought, okay, well that's a good criteria for something that's second or uh, support level two. Um, so if it if if it doesn't work and no users. There's no if there's no user document end user facing documentation for something it's a but we own it good good criteria or good good candidate for support level two because um, if it breaks probably nobody will notice because we haven't written any docs for it yet um, <laughs> so, yeah exactly um, and so uh, then support level three and the the whole point of this is because we need this moving to this place where we support where we, we have this second party plugin infrastructure implemented us implemented puts us in a, a position where we can support third party plugins um, or not really support them. We can support them, but we create we make we make the way our infrastructure is set up easier uh, like it's, it's an example for other people to do their third party plugins, right? Because so right now, and I think I have some, but right now you could, you know, you can run the create scripts and create yourself a, a package for either a model operations or a source or whatever, but it's not obvious, you know, how, how you would, um, how you would then make it known that you have that plugin out there and available but then at the same time maybe that's not mature enough to move into the second party ecosystem right this is just hey i wrote this one time it might work it might not right but i'm putting it out there on github um so the whole point of this is get us to a place where we can uh then you know 
maybe include on the doc site or something, hey, these are third-party plugins. So, so our doc site right now, um, it, um, you know, we have the plugins page and so the models, right? And so they say official, right? They all say official right now. Um, so the goal would be to create infrastructure, you know, around this whole, um, you know, to to have other people submit their third-party plugins somewhere to us to where we can say, okay, this is a third-party plugin. Maybe it gets displayed on the doc site and it'll say third-party, um, but everything is in a central location so that, you know, users can find out about it. Um, and they'll know based on the support level what they should expect. So if the support level is one, they should expect that it can work. If the support level is two, it may not work when installed with other plugins. Um, so for example, you know, that was the model transformers. Like if you were looking at this tutorial for a support level two plugin and you see that, um, and, and you see it says support level two, it'll come with a little warning that says, hey, you know, this plugin is not guaranteed to work with all the other support level one plugins. So if you run into issues, you should try creating a fresh virtual environment and installing just this plugin. So this tutorial does work, but it only works, like we can only guarantee that it works if you install just this one plugin, right? Um, and that's how we're, because some people, not everybody cares about having the functionality where, you know, some people care about specific use cases, right? And for them, it doesn't matter if I can't install this with, you know, everything else. I can just install a separate virtual environment for every use case. Um, but for other people, it very much matters, you know, that they're able to switch between models because that's one of our core functionalities as well, right? Um, and so that, that, you know, this this is where some of these concerns we mitigate through documentation, some of them we mitigate through CI, um, and that's sort of what we need to flush out in that ADR. Um, so if you guys want to be involved in that discussion, that, that's, that would be great. Um, so we can probably continue on in the next few meetings. Uh, I understand you guys are probably going to go back to school or, or you know, whatever, whatever it is that you guys are, are doing usually non-GSOC and be busy, but we would still be thrilled to have you involved because um, there's a lot of work to do. And uh, obviously you guys know how to do it. So, and then you can teach other people um, how to do it. And, and if we can split this off, then you guys can be maintainers as well. Um, so that would be great. Um, all right. Well, I'll, we'll conclude the meeting today because you were way over. I know it's late. So thanks, guys. And I, uh, any any final comments for the day, or we'll call it a day. I think we should call it a day. All right, good plan. All right, thanks, everyone. Great work with GSOC, and congrats to everyone. And, and looking forward to presentations. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.